How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today the time has finally come. We got subscriber rice or nice and I thought it would be fun to do somewhat of an import special. It seems like I have a lot of import fans as my subscribers. To pay my respects towards you guys, I decided let's take a look at a lot of import builds, some domestic, and let's see if they are rice or nice. A lot of American muscle fans say all imports are rice, so let's take a look. If you guys want to support the channel, go ahead and click the link in the description and pick up some fresh ass merch. I pulled a lot of pictures, so this might be a lengthy episode, but I'm gonna try to get through them at a decent pace. So let's go ahead and dive in with the first one. Drew, you said import special, that's a mini coupe. Okay, okay, you know what, I'm sorry, I put it in a stupid order, I just realized that. But anyway, let's take a look at the stanced out mini coupe. We got some wide body fender flares, done really nicely, paint matched to the rest of the car. Looks like it's a really nice job. Some camber in the rear, maybe less up front. Nice wheels that complement the overall build. And overall, just a nice looking Mini Coupe. Do I think it's the fastest thing ever? God no, look at it. I mean, it looks like it barely moves, but it does sit there really cute. So you know what, I'm gonna say it's okay. It's not really race inspired, but it looks cool. Next car, an E46 BMW M3. We do see a tow hook, and I know this is a really bad start to an import special, but you know what? Let's get rid of the German cars first and the British cars, and then we can dive right into the Japanese cars. Technically, it is an import. I'm not really lying, but here we go. Carbon fiber hood, purple tow hook sticking out of the front. It looks like maybe some carbon fiber inserts on the fog lights, and a better shot of that front end. This is all we get of this car, and honestly, it's not bad. I feel like if the purple tow hook was removed, it'd be better. Fitment is pretty good wheels are questionable but the fitment is pretty good all right here we go finally an import not a japanese car but a south korean car i know that's a big shock to probably a few of you out there but yeah hyundai is not japanese it's actually south korean still asian though so you know what i'm, I'm counting it we have a hyundai veloster here it is the newer generation of Hyundai Velosters. It's a weird three-door configuration. It's a really weird car. This one, some of its mods include Placida badges um, all over the car, aftermarket wheels, maybe an exhaust, maybe not. I'm not too sure about that, but you guys got to take a look at all of these Placy dipped trim pieces and let me know, is this rice or nice? Got boost? Does it really count if you have boost if it's a stock car that comes with a turbo? I mean, technically some Chevy Cruises have turbos, so... I mean, do they got boost? Uh, underneath the hood looks like a lot of Plasti Dip work. Don't diss it. You know, Plasti Dip isn't the worst thing ever. Maybe it's a Deadpool theme. Actually, I am confirming it is Deadpool themed. But you guys got to vote down in the comments. Is this Hyundai Veloster rice or nice? Just because he went and sprayed it with Plasti Dip, does that mean it's rice? Or does the value underneath all that still hold some good weight? You guys got to vote. All right, finally, a Japanese car. We have a Subaru WRX lower down. Maybe not static because the front bumper is still intact. Got some slight camber, but honestly, this is one of the cleaner looking WRXs that I have seen. I like the wide body flares. I like the stance look on this car. Everything that's done with it kind of complements it, and it's not overdone. Usually when you see stanced out WRXs, they got big old chassis mounted wings, crazy camber, just ridiculous everything. This guy took it down a notch, and I think it's paying off. Vote down in the comments. I like it. Not an import, clearly, but you know what? Got to take a look at some domestics to keep everyone happy. A nice looking Trans Am. Funny story. I almost got a Trans Am as my first car. Would I have liked it more than my V6 Mustang? And maybe instead of having that V6 Mustang, would I have bought a Camaro afterwards instead of my Mustang? Who knows? But honestly, a nice looking Trans Am. Nice looking bicycle, too. I actually used to ride one of those, too, before I had a car. We all got to start somewhere. All right, Honda Civic, and just from this first picture, you would think, damn, that thing is beat to hell, but what I'm noticing is some nice intercooler piping down here. That's the first thing that caught my attention. Who cares about the gold Plasti de badge? Let's see, maybe it's a good sleeper build. Side profile, we do have some, you know, mint colored wheels, not the best looking wheels ever. Maybe if they were more subtle, it would look a lot better on this car, but the mint color kind of, you know, sets it off a little bit too much. The rear end, looks like an eg hatch nothing crazy it just looks like every other honda civic out there no crazy camber though which i do like to see and then underneath the hood spoolie snail a little one but still a spoolie snail does your honda have a spoolie snail no i know it's coming drew it's coming everyone says their turbo's coming sorry sometimes the turbo just never comes i bet this thing is a lot of fun to drive probably not the fastest thing out there but still more fun than a stock honda civic props to you all right, this front end alone lets us know exactly what car this is. This is a Hyundai Genesis, not personally one of my favorite cars out there. And this guy, 
kind of ruined it. We got a Supreme toe strap, just cut right through the bumper. That sounds smart. That's a quick way to devalue your car right there because now you have a permanent slit in it. We have some really small canards that I'm sure do absolutely nothing. We have what looks like a wide body kit on it, if you would call that one. I don't think it's a wide body kit. It just looks like an inconvenience to remove your front bumper because now you have an extra bolt there. I don't know what the hell this is on the side. You can go ahead and fill me in in the comments. And then the rear end, come on. This little ducktail is cute and all. The roof spoiler is cute and all, but what's going on with your exhaust tips, man? Why are they sticking out so far? What's with the tow hook, too? I guarantee this thing has never seen a track in its life. This thing has probably never gone to a track to spectate, let alone be on one. Wheel setup isn't too bad, but you know what? I feel like all of the little tacky mods on it just to make it look more modified than a stock Genesis kind of hurt in this case. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and also those taillights are hideous. I'm sorry. All right, next car, gotta pay respects to the man himself, Paul Walker. This car right here inspired a lot of people to modify their cars. I'm sure a lot of us saw that movie growing up. Funny enough, not me, I didn't see the movie until a few years ago. But anyways, I'm sure a lot of us saw that movie growing up and wanted an Eclipse. And this is probably what got you into the JDM scene because the way that the car is in the movie just makes it seem super fast. And then you go and buy the car and realize it's really not that fast. But still, a cool car inspired a whole new wave of car enthusiasts. Even though this thing is ricey as shit. I mean, look at this thing. I'm sorry, man. Paul Walker, I know you didn't design the car. I really hope you didn't. But god damn, man. I mean, <laughs> come on. You didn't have to get the whole sticker book on the side. I'm, I'm just saying. Anyways, still a cool looking car. I just noticed that the Genesis is in the background there. So wherever this is at, they got some funky shit going on. But yeah, this, this is rice. I'm sorry. And this right here, this right here is just an insult. God, I want to slap you. All right, next car, a brand new S550 Mustang GT with what looks like performance pack wheels. These things, the 10-speed automatics, trust me, they are scarier than the manual transmissions by far. 10-speed automatic. If you're racing a new S550 Mustang GT and he has a 10-speed auto, beware, he's fast. All right, I thought we stopped this trend of imitating supercars. Why the hell do G35 boys or Infinity boys just in general imitate a GTR? I know they're called Skylines elsewhere, but here in America, okay, they ain't Skylines. They're not. And going and throwing a GTR front bumper on it to make it look like a GTR? That's the worst of the worst. It's one thing to call it a Skyline. You know, go ahead if you want to put the cute little AutoZone text on the back to call it a Skyline. That's sure. Go ahead. Whatever. Do whatever you want. But then to put the GTR front end on that and then make it look like a GTR, now you're just playing yourself because nobody is going to fall for it. You can tell yourself all you want that you own a Skyline, and I'm sure you're going to tell your kids that when you grow up, but you don't own a Skyline. You own a G35. And it's ricey. Here's a car you don't see every day, the Alfa Romero Giulia. I'm not sure if it's the Quadrifoglio or whatever the hell they call it, but the Alfa Romero sedans slept on, heavily slept on. Yeah, the front end kind of looks like an owl's beak, but these cars are slept on. If you want a sports sedan, you got the Kia Stinger, you got the Chevy SS, and if you got some more money, you can maybe go buy the BMW M3. Alfa Romero, look at this thing. No one's going to know what the hell this is. It looks, it, it looks exotic too. It looks luxury. So some people might hate the way it looks, but that's classic Alfa Romero right there. Cool car, heavily slept on. Now here is an Infiniti that didn't try to imitate a GTR and because he doesn't need to. You don't need to act like you have a car that you don't. I'm not out there acting like I have a Shelby GT500. I'm owning that I own a Mustang GT. I love my car, my car's fast, I love it. This guy right here is owning the fact that he has a G35. He did it clean and no giant chassis mounted wing, no stupid camber. I'm sure it sounds like a trumpet, but that's a story for a different time. This car, nice, tastefully modified, nothing crazy about it. It's a nice looking car. I also like the carbon fiber trunk with the ducktail integrated. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I love it. This thing on the other hand, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't know what's going on with the wrap with the bubbles underneath it. I'm sure it's supposed to look like snake skin or something like that. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's a Subaru Impreza Sport. It's not a WRX, it's a Subaru Impreza. I don't know how I feel about it. It's a little bit out there. I get it's going for the whole show car thing and I guess that's in a different category, but I don't know, I just, uh, it's, uh, it's not doing it for me. I'm sure if I saw this thing on the streets, I I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel. I'm sure I'd start saying some jokes here and there. I mean, it's just how I am in my natural habitat. I see weird cars and that's just how it is. It's a weird car. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's kind of intriguing me, but it's just a little too out there for me. The gold wheels especially. Let me know what you guys think. I'm actually interested what you think about this car. Comment it down below. Subaru Impreza Sport Rice or Nice. Now what you're about to hear right now is going to make you think hell is freezing over. I don't hate this car. I don't. I don't hate stanced out cars. 
you can do it and do it clean. This car right here is pretty clean. It's fitment is a one, the wheels, whatever. They might not be your taste. They're not really my taste. This whole thing isn't really my taste, but I can still see that he put time into it and respects his car. It's probably on bags because the front lip is still intact and he's doing it right. He's doing it the correct way. He's not staticking it out and just running over everything and destroying his car. He's taking care of his car and I can see that just in this build. He didn't go with crazy camber. That way he can be on all the Instagram pages out there. He's doing it tastefully. It's a stanced out car that's tastefully done, and I can respect that. This guy, on the other hand, still thinks we're living in 2002, where big ass 22 inch wheels is the hot thing. They almost look like Audi wheels or 2019 Honda Accord wheels. I don't know what they are. They're ugly, though. It's Fitman, though. Well, that's some good Fitman. That's better Fitman than most people I see that send me cars. I'm not gonna lie, look at that. That is, that is right up on the fender. I'm sure it wasn't by choice, though. Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, a car that's been stamped in the import scene since God knows when. And by the way, I didn't blur his license plate. If you want me to blur your shit, you do it yourself. I'm sorry, I'm not your bitch. But anyways, he didn't butcher this one. He knows what he's got. He added some vortex generators. He got some aftermarket wheels, unless they come stock with advanced. Damn, that'd be an expensive ass car. Yeah, his fitment isn't the greatest, but he knows what he's got. He even took a picture off road just to know, hey guys, look, it can do this. I bet your mama's minivan, well, it could probably do that too, but I bet your stance style Honda Civic can't do this. I'm sure it can't, but this Lancer though, this Evo though, oh, it could do it. Tastefully modified, thumbs up for me. This picture is so far away, I can't, I can't tell really what it is. I don't know what, what model this is. I know it's a three series, it looks like. I don't know, maybe a five, I don't know what the hell this is. It's got a tow hook, yellow fog lights, big ass wheels. Not my cup of tea. Chevrolet Corvette ZR1, a car that I'm kind of tempted to buy. Now they are expensive and I don't know if I wanna buy one of these just yet, but these cars, if you don't know what they are and one lines them next to you, run the other direction it's going to destroy you next car ford focus st fog lights check mishimoto intercooler check red spray painted brake calipers check some sort of windshield banner check and a bigger rear wing check don't forget the mud flaps check this guy's got the whole package next car a right hand drive sylvia s13 i don't think this is any of your guys's cars it looks like a drift missile to me i could be wrong look at that gigantic fucking rear lip what the hell is that super gold wheels not my cup of tea everything else about this car though is pretty clean i feel like it could use some tlc i don't know why this picture is upside down here is the interior this is what 99 percent of drift missiles look like get used to it but it appears to be boosted of some sort it does have an intercooler in there so you know what it probably sounds fucking mean honda last car a kia forte coupe aftermarket wheels i've seen these wheels on so many kia fortes you have no idea is it forte or fort correct me in the comments i'm gonna call it the forte that front license plate has to be scratching the shit out of your lip if it's only held on by those two zip ties it's got to be just taking a toll on that front lip you're gonna have to buy a new bumper soon i'm just saying anyways this car isn't the worst thing ever i'm not sure if it's quite royal class or not i don't know if uh, the queen of england is cruising around in a kia forte but maybe she is maybe she's not maybe this is her car you know what Queen of England, Audi. I like your car. Not really, I'm just being nice. It's okay, it's not a bad car though. And that'll do it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We had a lot of unique cars in this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a thumbs up and comment down below which car was the ricest and which car was the nicest. Until next video, peace.